I mentioned that the new week opening gap, which is the closing price of Friday, the previous Friday, and the opening price on Sunday. That range, whichever higher, Friday's close or Sunday's opening, and the midpoint, which is consequent, consequent encroachment. You want to extend those levels through the entirety of the week. Now, here's another factor. You want to use that same opening range for every week that starts in, the, in that same month. The algorithm will refer back to that within the same month. Now, there's a little bit of an overlap, too. What happens if you're using, for instance, like we're in the first and second week of February? Are we just using two? No. You go back as much as four weeks because there's going to be rotation that the algorithm is going to refer back to. It's not always looking at the calendar dates like we would look at. Like when January closes, stop right now. But you're having basically a rolling four-week look back. It will by default, encapsulate a monthly rotation in order flow that the algorithm will refer back to. What do I mean by that? The opening, new week opening gap, starting like this week coming here, when we see the opening price on Sunday, we are looking back the last four weeks. So there's going to be four weeks of new week opening gaps on a chart. You want to save a profile or a workspace or whatever else you would call it on, on a platform that's outside of trading view whatever that medium is that you save your your charts on you want to set up a, a template that is for new week opening gaps and you want to have the last four now obviously you'll have a fifth because you're starting with a new week so right away you're probably thinking oh this is gonna be a lot of stuff on my chart it's actually not it's actually not at all so it gives you a x-ray view of how the algorithm will refer back to old areas of real fair value. That's not to diminish fair value gaps because fair value is an evolving factor and principle in order flow. You're looking for levels of premium to discount, time-oriented concepts and entry points and targets, inefficiency in price and liquidity. Now you can also create a template for your new day opening gaps. And what is that? That is the difference between the 5 p.m. closing price on the S&P. This is also for Dow futures and NASDAQ futures and any indice really that closes between five o'clock and reopens at 6 p.m. Eastern time. So the distinction for new day opening gap, which is always going to be abbreviated as NDOG. I'm, I'm trying to think that, that I'm saying that right. But uh, new day opening gap is the difference between the closing price at 5 p.m. Eastern time. Or just spent simply whatever the local time is in New York. That's why you need to have a, a clock set to New York time and your trading view charts should be defaulted to New York time. Everything revolves around New York time. So 5 p.m. closing price and 6 p.m. opening price. That's your new day opening gap, that range. And you want to extend that out. Now, you want to do that for like the week and the week before. That's about as far as, in, in my opinion, I'm only interested in that. So you're going to have as much as 10 of them on your chart. You don't want anything else on that template, just that. And you will see by having a template like that, and also a template that has the new week opening gaps where there's nothing else on the chart. Because if you're trying to bring everything to your chart, you're going to look like you're doing what everybody else in retail trading does. They plaster all this stuff. You ever see those people that uh, decorate their lawns for Christmas? When I grew up, <laughs> we had several homes in the neighborhood that they brought everything out and you could you couldn't even see their lawn at all it was all these like little inflatable things or plastic ornaments that light up and whatever it was it was too much stuff well you don't want to clutter your charts up like that you want to be able to see price and time and also how it reaches into these areas of real fair value you'll be surprised to see how markets reach back to them turn 
gravitate back to them, turn, go through them, act as support, go through them, come back and act as resistance. You'll see real order flow. And it's really a fascinating study. And I don't want you to just take my word for it. I want you to look at it, study it. When the weekend, go back and see how the market referred back to those price points. When didn't it respect it? When it didn't respect it, was it on the heels of a market report that was high impact or medium impact? All those things are important for you to journal. 